macOS Sequoia 50.2 recently released to everyone, and last year, at the Point 2 update, macOS Sonoma has won. In this video, we will be testing macOS Sequoia 50.2 against macOS Sonoma 14.7.2, which is the latest as of recording. This first test is a boot up test. While this isn't the most important test, this one does tell us how quickly macOS will be able to start up. Sequoia started slightly faster at 12 seconds, while Sonoma's took 13. Now the next test is a login test, and right off the bat, Sonoma was significantly faster than Sequoia. Now for the next series of tests, we will be doing our first series of browser tests, setting with Speedometer. Speedometer tests are responsive of web apps, which unfortunately are quite common nowadays. It looks like macOS, Sonoma, and Sequoia are tied in this test, as I will be doing a 0.3 margin of error. Now next up, we will be doing the Jetstream benchmark, which tests more advanced JavaScript applications. And for this one, I will be doing a 1 point margin of error, and once again, they both tied. The final browser test that we will be doing is the motion mark test. This one really pushes the browser to its limits. This one runs random complex shapes and animations and sees what the average frame rate is. And it seems like Sonoma took the crown for this one. Now we're running this test in a Chromium based browser instead of a WebKit based one. And the results are somewhat interesting. You see the WebKit framework is embedded in a macOS and doesn't get updated unless a system update is performed, in this case, Sequoia. If this test were to run in Safari, Sequoia would have taken the victory here, but in this case, Sonoma won. The next series of tests we'll be doing are the Geekbench AI tests. We'll be running each test on the CPU, GPU, and MPU. These are why you would want to run a AI test on the CPUs for cross-platform compatibility, because not every computer has an MPU quite yet. It looks like that Sequoia dominated Sonoma in the CPU test, which is kind of surprising. Now this does kind of reflect tasks on, on the CPU, so this is still a good benchmark to think about. Now next up is the GPU test. Apple Silicon MacBooks don't have the best kind of GPU for AI work, but it is still a good thing to test to see how well a GPU can run on a Mac. And it looks like the GPU for AI workloads is better on macOS Sequoia as well, and it is also by a long shot. My initial predictions for this was that the MPU was going to be improved significantly for Apple intelligence, but I guess the CPU and GPU for AI also got improved. Anyway, let's move on to the NPU test. Windows computers are just now getting MPUs, but they don't have many on-device things for MPUs quite yet. Macs have a little bit, but I'm sure that within a year, there will be on-device processing for a ton of AI workload. Some examples that we have right now are motion tracking in Final Cut Pro, and I'm sure other companies will get the idea to start using the NPUs for other AI workloads as well. And once again, just as I expected, macOS Sequoia won the MPU test. If you go back to the CPU or GPU test, you will clearly see that doing AI processing is better on the MPU. Note that the MPU test won't be important at all if you're still rocking that Intel Mac. But as companies are working on adding AI, I'm sure they will want to start offloading the processing to the user so that they won't need those nuclear facilities to power the AI language models. Next, we are moving to the popular cross-platform benchmark Geekbench. Starting with the CPU, the CPU test measures both single-threaded operations, which may include sending an email or placing a willy widget, great app by the way and you should download it, to multi-threaded operations, which, which may include compiling one of those apps. Most actions are done on the single core, but as the tech industry moves more and more into using multi-threaded operations for more things, multi-core will become more important even for simple tasks. It looks like both macOS Sonoma and Sequoia both tied in the Geekbench test and I'll be giving a 10 point margin of error for single core. And for multi-core, I'm gonna be going 10 times the amount of CPU cores, which is eight, so an 80 point margin for the multi-core. This is the test that disproves the theory that Apple intentionally slows down devices. If your device seems to be slowing down, getting a battery replacement might be the best option for you, unless you have a much older Mac, and if you have an Intel Mac, I highly recommend switching over to Apple Silicon as soon as you can. Now next up, we will be doing the graphics portion of Geekbench. We will be testing both OpenCL and Metal. OpenCL is an open standard that Apple doesn't support anymore because they want people to use Metal, which is their own standard. While cross-compatibility is a downside of Metal, the biggest upside is that Apple knows their hardware, and having a proprietary standard like Metal is much faster as you will see here after the OpenCL test. Now despite Apple no longer including OpenCL updates in their operating system, macOS Sequoia won anyway, most likely because of optimizations done in Sequoia. And now we are doing the Metal test. Apple has been paying game developers to port their games to Apple Silicon Macs using Metal, and while gaming is still far off on macOS, I would say it's definitely getting better, just as long as Rosetta is still included for as long as possible. And as expected because of the optimizations, macOS Sequoia once again won. 
This video has officially concluded that macOS Sequoia is now officially faster than macOS Sonoma, if not officially on par. You guys should have no issues at all updating to Sequoia anymore. As someone who has daily drives macOS Sequoia, my favorite features are the window snapping and iPhone mirroring. And I'm hoping Apple Intelligence gets better in macOS Sequoia 15.4. Thank you all for watching. Comment, like, subscribe, share this with your friends, download my apps in the description down below, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!